Hi, my name's Ryan, and welcome back to a session today called Iron Cat. Now, John Simon, he's training for his first Ironman, so we thought we'll bring him in for a little test session, get him ready for it. John, how are you feeling? Feeling excited, slightly scared, but ready. Nerves are always good, it keeps you ready. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to get John nice and warm. John, you run the spot, 60 seconds, easy tempo, off you go. A little easy jog on the spot, it is 60 seconds, we're going to get you warm. Think in your mind, we're going to prepare for a race, prepare anything in your life, you've got to get your body ready for it. It's nice, slow, progressive, getting your body going, getting you warm, getting the heart trap, getting a small sweat, making sure mentally and physically you're ready for what's ahead. John is, like I said, <laughs> training for his first Ironman. The man is all about challenges, which makes it exciting. There we go, we've done 20 seconds, we've got 40 seconds to go, this is the perfect tempo to start. Next will be arm rotation. So just in, in a triathlon, you've got three stages, or Ironman, three stages, a lot going on. This is the running step, we're getting started, we're going to those shoulders, those arms, getting get those warms ready for the swim. Perfect, John. Love you. You've got 25 seconds to go. Next will be arm rotations, which is just swinging those arms forward like this. I'll tell you when, you've got 15 seconds to go. Easy tempo, it's getting you warm. Don't come at those blocks too quickly. We're jogging in the spot, John, keep it up. You've got five more seconds. We're going to those arm rotations, getting the shoulders and the lats warm in five, four, three, two, and one. Nice, beautiful big arm rotation. It's just thing now, getting ready for the water, getting the shoulders going. A lot of requirements there. So it is 30 seconds, John, then inch, inchworms next, which is a standing position. Try to start a straight leg if you can, get into those hamstrings, walk into a push-up position. No push-up, just walking straight back up again. All right, keep it up. Beautiful work. You've got 15 seconds, that's at home. 15 seconds, dark in the body ready. Anything Iron Man based is a mental strength. You've got to dig deep. So the session's going to be testing you mentally as well. In five, four, three, two, and one. Inchworm. So just walk it out to a flat, high plank position. Walk it back. Beautiful. There we go. 30 seconds. For the inchworm, don't forget when you walk into that flat back position, you're not dipping your hips to the ground. I'd rather you keep it slightly piped if needs be, but do not dip your hips to the ground. You're not engaging your abs in, it's counterproductive. There's 15 seconds left. Next will be a reverse lunge with lateral reach, which means when you come back, you close the closed side into a lateral reach in five, four, three, two, and one. Reverse lunge into the closed side. There we go, beautiful close. There we go, other side, alternating. Twist into it, alternating reaches. There we go. There we go, beautiful. This is 30 seconds. We're getting into your hips, your legs, we're open. there's a lot coming ahead of you. Think about it, it's an iron hand, you're gonna get tested for against those joints, you're gonna get John ready for the race, next will be wise squats. You've got 15 seconds left. John, keep moving for the wise squat, those arms up nice and high, you can do beautiful squats up and down. All right, in five, four, three, two, and one. So it's wide squats, wide leg, beautiful. For the wide squats, keep the arms up. You're now getting to that lower back. You're going to feel the tightening up, which is great. We open up your hips, getting to those hip hinges, create force, you get warm. There's a lot coming on for the Iron Man coming ahead, so make sure each muscle group is ready for what's ahead. We've got 15 seconds left. We're then going to get a recovery period, and obviously workout one will start then. In 10 seconds, keep it up. Beautiful work. Pace yourself. The journey's about to begin. The race is about to start in five, Four, first recovery, three, two, and one. Love you, John. Have some water if you want. Dab that face, get the body ready for the work ahead. Workout one is all about the swimming segment. We're forcing the mimic in the muscles, how it might feel out in the water. Different lengths, different degrees of what's coming. So we're going to start with the push-up, contralateral limb raises, which essentially, John, is a push-up, and you've got opposite arms, opposite leg. Okay, one push-up, opposite sides. Okay, this is obviously mimicking certain race muscle groups, getting deep into those muscles, it is 60 seconds of endurance space, so pace yourself. We're going to start in three, two, and one. Off you go. So stay into the push-up position, one push-up, and opposites. Beautiful. There we go. Lovely. That is a perfect example of push-up contralateral limb raise. It's 60 seconds. It's endurance space. When you're in the water for a long period of time, you've got to dig deep. It's just you and your mind, just you and those thoughts. So make sure you're clearing the head out, only thinking positive thoughts, finding your why, motivating yourself. Because in that moment, the motivation which holds on to you, only you by yourself. You've got to motivate and dig deep. That's beautiful, John. That's 30 seconds in. Right now, I'm pretty sure you're both on your warm. Feel it. It's round one. You have two more rounds. So for the first tempo, when you get into anything in a race space, you don't come on those blocks too quick. You always pace up. You get into the rhythm of things. So find your rhythm early. We've got 20 seconds left. Next will be reverse angels, which means you're lying on your stomach. Arms next to you. Just bring it forward like you're doing a butterfly. All right. Keep going. You're almost there. 10 more seconds. John, I'll ask you to turn around when you do this. Not just yet. All right. So your head will face the other way. In five Four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. So face this way, just sink on, on your stomach. 
This way. Arms are facing this way. Okay, so it's just this way. I'm just telling you, put your head facing this way for me. All right, there we go. The arms next to you and the butterfly stroke. All right, off you go. Beautiful. There we go. This is 30 seconds. There we go. Lovely. Work into the shoulders, work into your lats, air based. Next to be a diamond push up, which means hands close together, working into those triceps, your functional endurance, that strength you require. 15 seconds to go. Beautiful, John. World class. That's great. 10 more seconds. You're going to go into a diamond push up for 30 seconds. You're nearly there. At home, keep moving. Five, four, three, two, and one. John, diamond push ups, hands together. And there we go. And off you go. 30 seconds. Slow control. Find your rhythm. It's the first round. Find that rhythm for yourself. You'll have round two and three to increase tempo if you want, or just find that beautiful endurance based work. You've got 10 more seconds. Next will be dish rocks, which means you're on your back. I'll talk you through when you get there. In five, four, three, two, and one. Onto your back like a dish and gently rock up and down. There we go. Gently rock up and down. Legs up and small rocks. Beautiful. There we go. Move up and down like a dish. There we go. This is 60 seconds. All right. So this is activation for those abs. John's working tight as abs, keeping his legs static, but a nice gentle rock. It is endurance. We're working those fundamental abs when you're in the water, when you're on the bike, when you're running. Ab foundation is vitally important for everything we do. That is the place you build your home. All right, you've got 30 seconds left, John. That's perfect. Slow control. You're going to get a rest after this, which will be your second recovery of the session. You'll have time. You'll have 30 seconds to compose yourself. All right, keep going. Keep moving. you got this. Perfect. 20 more seconds. Slow control. When you get stuck, just hold it there. Don't rock for a while. You want to start again, you gently rock through. There we go. 15 seconds at home. You've got 15 seconds. You're going to get a 30 second rest soon. You now know what to expect for round two and three. You're going to get deep into those muscles. Beautiful, John. You've got this. You nearly there at home for five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. And that's round one done. All right. John, at home, yourself too. You know what to expect. The session is going to test that endurance. It's going to get deep into the mindsets of what we're doing. But when you're doing a race, it's great being cardio-based, great being fit. But unless your mind is there with you and you have the mental capacity to carry you through in any event you started, you're going to struggle. So tell yourself you can. Tell yourself why you can. Hold on to the motivational reasons that keep you your moving forward. Your why. Your four fundamental pillars that guide you to what you do. All right. So let's push up contrast. The limb raises. 60 seconds. Get into endurance. Remember now, John, dig deep into that mindset. Tell us if you can. At home. Three, two, one. Off you go. There we go. It's 60 seconds. I do not admire you doing an Ironman, but I do definitely think it's a fantastic challenge. But I know it's going to be mindset-based. Besides the physicality of what's coming your way, the mental is hectic. Really interesting. At home, this is 60 seconds. We're digging deep into endurance. We're forcing you now to, to have those voices in your head telling you can't and forcing you to tell yourself you can and holding on to your fundamental motivational points that, that drive us to succeed. All right, so I'm sure John has his key points that drive him forward and force him to want to be the better version of himself, and we're going to test that here. You've got 30 seconds to go. We have reverse angels again, which means on your stomach, those butterflies. All right, bring those arms next to you. Beautiful tempo. Lovely. Pace yourself, you've got 20 seconds, you've got this perfect tempo at home. If you want to increase the speed, you can. If you want to taper, if you can too. Provided you're out your personal comfort zones. When you're doing an Ironman, you cannot rest in a comfort zone. You've got to push up, you've got to challenge yourself. You've got 10 more seconds, John, you've got reverse angels next. Perfect, love it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Onto your stomach, flat stomach, and just rotate through again like those butterflies. In three, two, one, off you go. Squeeze through, beautiful, there we go. This is 30 seconds. The so arms next to you and back. There we go. Slow control. So as you can feel, John, this is the moment where you can catch a bit of breath. You're giving your arms a chance to rest. It's more back and shoulders. All right. Next we diamond push. It means the arms are working again for another 30 seconds. You've got 15 seconds left. You've got one more push on those arms and it'll be air base. So you can find those little resting points for yourself. Next will be diamond push ups in five, four, three, two, and one. And so you go diamond push ups, 30 seconds. Off you go. After we those dish rocks again into that endurance, which is abs based, you're gonna need strong abs for the race coming your way. It's vitally important for the, what you're gonna be doing. Beautiful work. Slow control tempo, that's perfect. You've got 15 seconds left. Next, oh. next we come on, John. Next will be those dish rocks, which means on your back, which means your arms get a rest. Your abs don't, but your arms do. Keep moving, keep breathing. You're nearly there for five, four, three, two, and one. Onto your back, beautiful. Into those dish rocks. Also, a gently rock up and down like a dish if you can. You need to rest, just hold the static like that. There we go, that's beautiful. All right, this is 60 seconds. This is endurance based. So when you feel you need to rest, you want to bend your legs in and take them out again, you can. There we go, just shake it up, release the abs for a second. Take it back 
and they start again. It's 60 seconds. When doing anything, if you're doing an Ironman, for example, you're going to have to find those moments where you can catch a little active recovery. So in other words, you're going to slow your tempo a fraction. You won't stop, but you'll taper off. Moments where you can increase your speed. These are the moments you have to learn how to manage yourself through a race, how to manage your body, how to manage your mindset. But the most important part is managing your mindset. Telling yourself you can, never letting the voice tell you you can't. You've got 15 seconds left. There's a perfect example of managing yourself, knowing which to taper off and knowing which to start again. The most important part, he hasn't stopped moving. He's kept pushing himself. You've got 10 more seconds. Next will be a break, which I'm sure you're grateful for. You're nearly there. For five, four, three, two, and one. John Wilkroth, boy. Great work. Lovely. Well done. Catch your recovery. That's 30 seconds. I know that's a quick break. We're testing your endurance. We're giving you small intervals to force that quick recovery. Force off to catch your breath quickly. Hydrate quickly. When you're on the race, you cannot stop and start for five minutes. You've got a quick interval break. Grab some water. Grab a bit of goo. And off you go again. So we are mimicking that feeling. Catching quick recoveries. Quick bursts of energy. All right. You've got 10 more seconds. Push up, contract your limb raises again to start. John's got serious, his glasses off, which means he is dead serious. He doesn't want to see what's ahead of him. In <laughs> three, see what's you don't. Listen to my voice, I'll guide you. All right, push up, contract your limb raises in three, two, and one. So it's opposites again. One push up, and so it's opposite range movements. Perfect. This is six seconds again. I personally love this movement, contralateral limb raise, because it fires up into those opposites. It works your posterior chain. We've engaged the front half here with push-ups to bring in his chest and his arms as well. So therefore, it's not just stabilization. It's not just working his core. It's multifaceted. There's a lot going on here. It's 60 seconds of tight, increased mobility work with strength. You've got 30 seconds left. John's tempo is perfect. He's into round three, which means this last round, last time we'll be doing this today, perfect work. At home, you've got 20 seconds to go. Pace yourself. Make sure it counts. Dig deep. Next to be those reverse angels, which means your arms get a small rest as you're on your stomach, and you're moving like you're doing a butterfly. Nice, big, beautiful angel movements. You've got 10 more seconds. You're nearly there. At home, if you need to taper off the speed, do that, but don't stop moving. Five, four, three, two, and one. Reverse angel, John, on your stomach. Arms start next to you. Like you're doing a butterfly. Big angel wings movement. Range through. There we go. It's 30 seconds. Next, you're going to have diamond push-ups, which means you're back in the arms, but they'll be back in the arms for the last 30 seconds of the home. Then you're going to get to those dish rocks, which is endurance work for your abs again. Beautiful, John. Great work. You've got 10 more seconds, John. 10 more seconds. Dig deep. You're nearly there. Tell us if you can. You've got diamond push-ups coming up in five, four, three, two, and one. And so diamond push-ups for 30 seconds. Last round of this. Dig deep. Tell us if you can. Hold on to your motivational points, John. At home, Find those reasons that motivate you. We all have them. We all have those motivational points. It might be something that we want to achieve in ourselves. It might be something we thought we could never do. Whatever motivates you, hold on to it. When you've got to dig deep and find that reason in your mind, only you know what that reason is, that motivates you. Find it and hold on to it. John, you've got dish rocks in 10 seconds. We're happy to hear. You're almost there. You're nearly there. Don't quit. You've got this. Five, four, three, two. Beautiful work. Dish rocks for the last 60 seconds. Last 60 seconds. Off you go, it's endurance, it's abs. This is when you're on that race, you buy yourself, there's no one in your ear telling you why you're doing it, just yourself. All right, off you go, 60 seconds, small rocks, you've got this. You're going to get a rest off this for 30 seconds and round one is done. All right, workout one is done. There's a perfect resting point. The reason I say dip those knees in, not put them on the ground, but you're still working your abs to a degree, you're not releasing them. So you might be tapering back, but you're not resting them completely. You're just keeping them too active, keeping the legs up, and you increase the leg and the harder work again. All right. You've got 30 seconds to go. I know it's tough. Hold on to those reasons in your head. Tell yourself you can. Dig deep. Find those motivational points. Hold on to your pillars. Hold on to them. It might be family, it might be friends, it might be your own motivational points. Whatever it is, dig deep and hold on to it. You've got 20 seconds left. You're going to get a rest, and then the swimming segment is done. You've got cycling next. You've got this, John. You can do this. You've got 10 seconds at home. 10 seconds. Come on, let's make it count. You're nearly there for five, four, three, two, and one, world class. Here's your 3.2K wow. swim done. Well done, fantastic work. We're gonna head into those cycling now. We're gonna mimic those cycling muscles with a different feeling. All right, for some Bul Bulgarian plyometric split squats. So for this, you're gonna bring out the chair. You need to do a quick demo while John's catching his breath. It's literally one leg on, one leg off. You can come down, and it's a little pop in the front. That's all it is. You're working your cycling muscles. We get into your explosive mechanism, the hamstrings, quads, glutes, all the fun stuff. All right, so plyometric Bulgarian split squats. It's 30 seconds per leg. Pace off is round one. Get a feel for it. What's okay. the break? The break's almost done. <laughs> You've got, we're going to start in five seconds. All right, so make your way to the front. Get your bench on one leg behind you, one leg behind you, and in front. Three, two, 
And one small little down and a little pop in the front. A little pop. When you come out, a little jump at the top. Yep, a little jump. There we go. So this is now engaging your hamstrings as well as your quads. Keep that weight through your heel. I want to force you, because on a bike, your hamstring is short, and the hamstring does a lot of work. So I want to engage his hammies, get him to work hard. Okay. You've got 15 seconds left, and you're going to change legs. Perfect tempo. Love that. At home, you've got 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. Come on. Just you, the bike, in the road. Just make it count for five, four, three, two, and one. Switch it out. Other leg. There we go. Change it up. On. And same thing. 30 seconds. Little small movement. And pop at the top. All right. Off you go. Lovely. Perfect. It's round one. Find the tempo that best suits you. But you're going to have two rounds after this to test yourself and push yourself. After this, we've got box jumps, which means you face a box, you jump on, you step off. I don't want you jumping off. Safety first. Ten more seconds, John. Beautiful. You're nearly there. At home, let's pace it. Let's keep moving forward. You're nearly there for five, four, three, two, and one. Turn, face that bench. Box jumps, 30 seconds. In three, two, and one. Soft landing and step off. Beautiful. Jump up, stand up. Perfect like that and step off. Pace yourself. I don't mind you doing five, six jumps for the first round. Get a feel for it. It's 30 seconds. At home, pace is off. Like I said, it's round one to John. Don't forget that you've got 15 seconds left. We're then going to do a reverse lunge into a power lunge. I'll give you a quick demo. Perfect. Step off. Lovely. You're nearly there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Quick demo for you. Reverse lunge into a power lunge. It's off in the front. Okay. So that's all you're going to be doing. All right. Reverse lunge into a power lunge in three, two, and one. Off you go. We're going to work one leg at a time. Pop it up. Beautiful. There we go. Take it back and pop it up. So I'm forcing explosive muscle. I'm forcing you on the bike. You're pedaling. You're climbing a hill. You've got this mountain in front of you. Like, how am I just going to dig deep? That's how. You're going to dig deep. You're going to knuckle those feet down. You're going to work at your hammies and your glutes, and you force yourself to climb that mountain. That's what we do now. You've got 10 more seconds. We're going to change legs soon. In five, four, three, two, and one. Lovely. Easy transition. Reverse lunge and pop the top again. In three, two, and one. Off you go. Take it back and a little pop in the front. Just get a feel for it. Feel what it feels like. All right, so the first five minutes you're into the bike for the first two, three Ks, you're getting a rhythm for it, you're getting a feel for it, you're seeing what it's due to your legs. That's what you're doing now. You've got 15 seconds left, and obviously when you're on the bike, you go to some bicycle crunches, it just makes sense, right? You've got <laughs> 10 more seconds left. <laughs> got bicycle crunches soon in five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Lovely, John. On the mat, fast your crunches, 30 seconds, that's an abs, just to remind you how important foundations for what you're about to do. In three, two, one, off you go. 30 seconds, pace off, beautiful. John, after this, you're happy to hear you get a rest. Only 30 seconds, but you know what to expect now. Okay, at home, you know what to expect. So slow it down. Here's a moment you can work those abs, you get the deep burn, but you can actually actively rest. So if you're clever, you're working those fundamental abs right now, 30 seconds, plus a 30 second break, which means 60 seconds cardio recovery. Okay. You're nearly there for five, four, three, two, and one. John, world class. So 30 second break. Well, my boy, brilliant. Take that break. My advice when you're doing a quick recovery, especially short breaks, catch that breath quickly. Two or three deep breaths. Slow the heart rate right down. Have some water. So about 10, 15 seconds, you've composed yourself. You start recovering, getting ready for the next set. When doing anything, especially an Ironman, you're forcing yourself to get quick recovery. You do not have the luxury of stopping for five to 10 minutes. You've got to push yourself. All right, so John, plyometric Bulgarian split squats again. All right, so one leg off, one leg on. And so small pops in the front, forcing your leg power off that bike. In three, two, and one. There we go. Deep into it, and a little pop at the top. It's 30 seconds per leg, final step, but you now know what to expect. I've got no doubt you'll find it easier this round, because your body and your mind knows what you're expecting to do. So find that pace, breathe. Slow that breathing, control your oxygen, that was life for you. Okay, that's gonna be your fundamental force to keep you going forward. At home, win the oxygen battle, deep breaths. Don't hold your breath. Oxygen is life for those muscles. You've got 10 more seconds, we're gonna change legs soon. Next leg will be a bit more powerful because you're gonna feel what to expect in five, four, three, two, and beautiful, John. Switch it out, other leg, come back, pace it. There we go, step it through, shake it out, start again. Other leg comes on, other leg comes off. There we go, pop it forward. And off you go, 30 seconds. After this, you're going to have box jumps for 30 seconds. Again, there's explosive muscles. You're working the hamstrings, you're working your glutes, you're working your quads. What you want to bark, you're firing. Through. You're working those legs at a very vigorous pace. And that's what we're trying to mimic you. We're trying to mimic that feeling on the bark for what it feel like your quads and hamstrings and those calves. All right, so you've got 10 more seconds left. Perfect. You have box jumps next in five, 
four, keep moving, three, two, and one. Beautiful, lovely. Box jumps next, gentle jump on, step off, right, you got this? Dig deep, tell yourself why. <laughs> In three, two, and one, off you go, and step off, lovely. So the step off is there because when you're getting tired at the movement empire, we don't want to take a chance, you're jumping off and hurting your ankle, hurting your knee, rather safe and press. The actual work here is the explosive pop, it's not jumping off, it's a jump up. All right, you've got 15 seconds left. We're then gonna go into the reverse lunge with a power lunge at the top. Perfect, 10 more seconds. Make sure at home you are pacing yourself just outside your comfort zone. You do not develop in a comfort zone. So take that one step out the box where it's uncomfortable and force yourself to develop there. In five, four, three, two, and one. Reverse lunge into a power lunge. All right, in three, two, and one. Off you go. 30 seconds per leg, little pop at the top. Beautiful, that's all it requires. Often we think we have to explode to our maximum level every single time, when in actual fact, it's about being consistent and then making sure every jump is just outside that comfort zone. No point giving me three or four massive jumps in the next two, you hardly leave the ground. I'd rather you be consistent with those pops, but if you're doing that now, each week the progressive work comes together and those jumps get bigger. All right, you're gonna change legs in five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful, John. Same thing, same tempo. You've got this 30 seconds, the other leg, then we're going to those bicep crunches, and the legs get a rest. It's active rest for the, for the legs, but the abs are still working. From there will be another 30 second recovery, which effectively means you get a 60 second recovery from anything cardio based. So pace yourself. Lovely, John. 15 seconds to go. At home, you're going to get a rest soon. You're nearly there. Make it count. Dig deep. You've got 10 more seconds before those bicep crunches are coming in. For five, four, three, two, and one. Lovely work, John. On the mat. Bicycle crunches, please. 30 seconds. So use this as a nice active rest from cardio, and you'll get a 30 second break after this. Off you go. 30 seconds, bicycle crunches, make it count. There we go. Knees, opposite elbows, as you can see, John's lifted his head, which is perfect. We don't want you arching through your lower back. Lower back must be flat to the ground. That's why we'll elevate that head and shoulders, bringing knees to opposite elbows. You have got 15 seconds to go. You will get a 30 second recovery, and then round three, the last round of the cycling segment, John. You'll be happy to know that. <laughs> All right, these smiles, these giggles. Not so happy about that, but you know it's coming around. In five, four, three, two, and one. John, world clock. I'm gonna you world clock every time, but you push it off and I'm proud of you, that's great. That's what I'm for. There we go, you got 30 seconds left of recovery. All right, the recovery's just started. We got those Bulgarian explosive plyometric split quads for the last round. Oh. We're mimicking those Bike muscles, the hammies, the quads, the glutes, all those things that make us hurt in the bike. That's what we're trying to get into deep. We're trying to force that explosive power. All right, so you've got 15 seconds left. John, your last round of this. Last round. Okay, you're coming downhill now towards the finish line. You know, next will be the running segment. So in your head, you can really feel that positivity coming away. You can feel that breeze. You can feel that breeze. Feel that breeze. All right. So we've got the last round of Bulgarian plyometric split squats in five, four, three, two, and off you go. A little pop at the top. Beautiful. This is 30 seconds per leg. We are forcing the muscle burn, we are forcing the leg, we are forcing the endurance of those muscles, we need them. Besides your mindset being strong, and your body be strong to match it, because your mind can tell you all day, yes you can, but your body's gonna be right there with you. All right, you've got 10 seconds to go, then we're gonna change legs, keep working, keep breathing, it's the perfect tempo, love it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Switch it out, easy plyometric change, there we go, leg comes up, leg goes down, into that pop, and off you go, 30 seconds, love it. And pop, beautiful. So, this is the last 30 seconds of this, all right? We've got box jumps next, a little bit of explosive burst to go, reverse, load your power lunge with me, now we're singing those legs out again, and then your bicycle crunches. All right, 15 seconds left, 15 seconds left, and you've got 30 seconds of box jumps, make sure you're popping up, stepping off, but for each jump, you're exploding through, five, four, three, two, and one. World class. Okay, box jumps for 30 seconds. You've got this. This is your last box jumps. Last box jumps. Dig deep for it, make it count. Off you go. 30 seconds. All right, you're coming downhill. You thought, yes, I've come to the end. All of a sudden, you realize, whoa, whoa, last little hill towards the finish line. This is where you're going to dig deep. Remind yourself of motivational points because the race is not done just yet, and you have to dig deep to remind yourself. Not always is life an easy journey. Those challenges is what makes you stronger. All right, you've got 15 seconds left. We're going to reverse lunge into a power lunge next for 30 seconds per leg. You've got 10 more seconds. Beautiful, lovely. Nearly there, John. Last two jumps. Five, four, three, two, 
and one step it off perfect all right reverse lunge into a power lunge last bit of this 30 seconds per leg in three two and one off you go so reverse lunge at that pop all right reverse lunge at that pop it's 30 seconds per leg we're taking it from a slow movement into an explosive compound. Right? We're adding the two together to make dynamic change. We're forcing your body to take us up out of comfort zones. Because if you're not going to do it for us, we're going to do it for you. Okay. So it's 30 seconds per leg. You've got 15 seconds left. Lovely. Nice, slow control. It's all about consistency. Being consistently consistent. That's the most important part. All right. In five, four, three, two, and one. Change leg into that pop. Off you go. 30 seconds. Perfect. Love that. Easy transition. Beautiful. There we go. You're always going to have one leg which might feel more dominant than the other, and that's okay. All right? Your naturally right hand or your naturally left hand, you're always going to have a dominant side. We're trying here just to match them out as best we can. All right? To match out that's the difference between each arm or each leg, and to get as close to as possible how we can. All right? You've got 15 seconds left. Next will be bicycle. Well, bicycle crunches, obviously. <laughs> 10 more seconds to go. Last little bit around the corner in five, four, three. Two and one, beautiful. On your mats, John, bust your crunches for the last 30 seconds, and then the 30 second rest, and we're going to your running segments. All right, in three, two, one, off you go. Knees to elbows and bust your crunches. There we go, opposites, beautiful. You see, John took a second there to remind himself to get his back nice and flat because form is every other movement empire. You can never sacrifice form for a second. Take a moment to look down, make sure you're in the right position, and start that rep form correctly. All right, if you haven't got a starter, taper off now, look again, make sure your back is on the ground, and start through again. It's 30 seconds, you've got 10 seconds left, you're gonna get a 30 second recovery, and then your cycling is done. We're doing the running segments in five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful work, lovely, well done. World 30 second break, world class work, <laughs> lovely, well done. All right, so, two out of three grouping is done, we're now going to the run, which by this stage, you've probably got a little bit of wobbly leg, trust me, I've done one before, and those legs definitely wobble the transition between, it's tough, so we're testing. We're giving those block sessions for a reason. We want to test those transitions. All right. Now we'll be running. We're going to start off with step-ups. So you bring that chair back again. John, for a step-up, I'll give you a quick demo. All I'm wanting is flat foot, heel weight to the heel, and you come up and down. Stop. Up and down. Stop. Okay. It's 30 seconds per leg. Mimicking your climbing hill. Boom. You're running. You're fatigued. The hill's climb's coming. You get to those deep muscles. Okay. 30 seconds per leg. So final tempo is round one for yourself. See what it feels like. You can increase it to round two and three if you want. In five, four, three, two, and up you go, and down. Find a tempo, beautiful. 30 seconds per leg. Next will be incline mountain climbers, which means you're gonna have those hands on the step and just driving your knees to elbows. But first, it's 30 seconds per leg here. We've got 20 seconds to go. Like anything in a triathlon or a Ironman or anything where you're breaking into segments, find a tempo early on. Make sure you get a feeling for what it feels like. You've now left the bike, you're on the road, you're running the first kilometer or two, might feel a little bit heavy, but your body will transition and it will adapt. All right, you're going to change legs in three, two, and one. Switch it out. Beautiful transition, easy. It's called the brick workout. The brick. Because your legs feel like bricks. There we go. The brick, and I can tell you, he's right. The legs get heavy, and it's those transitions. The different muscles, the different flavor of what's working. When you're on the water, your muscles work differently. When you're on the bike, your muscles work differently. When you're on the running road, the muscles work differently. So that's why you do those block, those brick sessions, you work those muscles, you work past that fatiguing point and adapt quickly. That's what we're working on. You've got 10 more seconds, then you're going to incline mountain climb, which means you're going to hold the chair and drive knees to elbows. You're still running, you're still engaging that chair in five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let me just turn this around for you. All right, you're going to hold the hands there. Mountain climbers in three, two, one. Off you go, drive it. It's 30 seconds. We're now forcing it into those legs. Next will be a little bit of slower feeling. It'll be a single leg balance tap, which basically means, John, you should put one leg and opposite touch the ground. That's what you're going to do. You're going to work one leg at a time. When you're running, you want to make sure that when you are tired, your ankles and knees and everything else still react quickly, even though when you're getting tired. All right, so you've got 10 more seconds. Next will be single leg balance taps in five, four, three, two, and one. Get those glass. I'll move out the way for you. So single leg balance tap is essentially you're just standing up. One leg at a time, you're going to come, touch, and stand up. Okay, 30 seconds per leg in three, two, and one. Opposite, opposite hand. hand, yes. There we go. This now you have to know is a slow control feeling. You're still going to burn, all right, but it's a rest in the cardio. So you get a chance here to slow the breathing down, catch your heart rate, compose that breathing for the work ahead. We're doing 30 seconds per leg, which means basically a minute of slow activation work 
into those leg surrenders, which basically now is climbing a hill again. You're going to burn those muscles. You thought you were done before you came to the end, but whoop, you're not. There's another hill coming, which means leg surrenders in 10 more seconds. You're going to change legs. Keep moving. Slow down if you have to, make sure you keep moving forward. In five, four, three, two, and one. Other leg. Beautiful, John. Love that. As you come opposite again, small little balance through and touch. This is all the small muscles you're going to need when you're running. All the small balancing groups. Okay. 30 seconds per leg. Next will be leg surrenders. While John is going, I'm going to show him the form so we're not going to lose that set. Leg surrenders up with the right, down with the right. Up with the left, down with the left. All right. Got it. You've got it. 10 more seconds for leg surrenders and you're going to get a rest. It's basically a 60 second cardio rest for you in five, four, three, two, and one. Face the front of me. It's those leg surrenders in three, two, one and time. one knee at a time. First right knee. Or left knee, come up the same leg, then you change legs now. Now to the right. There we go. Beautiful. This is 30 seconds. All right, you can see John's got his arms up, which is exactly what I want them. His back is straight. He's not arching through, rolling through. He's keeping his abs engaged, which he already knows that abs are a fundamental part of what he's doing. That supports his posture. That supports his back. That supports everything he's doing here. All right, you've got 10 more seconds. You will get a 30 second break soon. Yes, a 30 second quick recovery. Time to learn how to slow the breathing down and catch some quick water in five, four, Three, two, one. and one. Full class. Love that. 30 second quick rest. All right. You've pulled to the side of the road. You're a quick water in the goo. You're recovering. You only got 30 seconds. You don't want to lose too much time. So we force those quick recoveries, those quick interval sessions to start you again. We're going to start off with step ups again for 30 seconds per leg. All right. So 30 seconds per leg into those inclined mountain climbers. Then there is a 60 second break. We slow it down. Single leg balance taps. All right. You're going to work one leg at a time. Step ups in three, two, and one. Off you go. <laughs> Only 30 second rest. You've got to catch that breath quickly. Cool. Get cool. that water, cool. get that goo in the system, and off you go again. All right. So it's 30 seconds per leg. Even this, this will spark the heart rate, but it's a bit more muscle based. You're climbing into those glutes, into your quads, putting that weight through your heel because you want to engage your hammies, engage your glutes. We don't want your quads being dominant here. So we're forcing the weight away from your toes. All right. You've got 10 more seconds before we transition to the other leg. Slow control tempo for five. Four, three, two, and one. Switch it out, other leg. Beautiful, John. Love that. Easy transition, and off you go. 30 seconds. Next to be those inclined mountain climbers, which means elevated heart rate. You're going to pump those knees to elbows. You're going to work it quick. You've increased. You're coming downhill now. So the body's getting away from you a little bit. You're going to control it still yourself. All right, you've got 15 more seconds. Then inclined mountain climbers. And then again, you'll have a minute to control your breathing through single leg balance taps. In five, four, three, two, and one. Incline mountain climbers. Hands that bench. Glass off. Get serious. Off you go. 30 seconds. Draw those elbows. Now we're sparking your heart rate. You're coming downhill. You're catching. You'll compose yourself. you compose that breathing. And next, you'll be able to do single leg balance taps, which is getting the small muscle groups ready again to catch yourself on the road or on the mountain. You might sometimes have a bit of a, a rock or something you might hit. You need that quick reaction time to catch it. All right. You've got 15 more seconds. Next will be a single leg balance tap. 30 seconds per leg. Lovely. Keep driving, John. It's beautiful. You're nearly there. Go. Almost there. For five, four, three, two, and one. There we go. Single leg balance taps. Essentially, it's a 60 seconds to catch your breath while forcing the small muscle groups to work. Off you go. Perfect. All the balance taps, slow the breathing, control the heart rate, slow the movement down. This is about balance. This is not a part of racing or rushing around. This is where you're slowing it down to get the small muscles to catch up with the big muscle groups to balance the body out. All right, 30 seconds per leg. Beautiful. You've got 10 more seconds before we change sides. 10 more seconds left. We'll make a smooth transition to the other leg. In five, four, three, two, and one. Switch it out. Up you come. Through. Beautiful little tap. Slow control. Love that. At home, this is a perfect example of a single leg balance tap. Slow control into the abs. Ask that, bring the leg up front. Take it back down again. Touch. It's a balancing movement. We're forcing your abs to engage, which is your foundation. We've always said to you, that's where you build your house on your foundation and make sure your foundation is strong. You've got 10 more seconds left. We're going to end with leg surrenders. Last little burn. You're now coming down again. Uphill again. It's a little burn for you. In five, four, three, two, and one. So those leg surrenders. Grab that towel. No problem. So legs are in us, up with the right, down with the right, up with the left, down with the left. We're getting to that final little burn. You thought you were done, but whoa, there's a hill before we get a small break in the water in the goo. In three, two, one, off you go. There we go. Now the left. Climbing to those legs. Fourth bit. You open up your hips, you're rotating through, you climb up with one leg, climb up the other leg. This is digging you deep. This is getting a little final burn. 
Sometimes you think you're coming to the end and you realize you're not. And it's a little mental battle we have with ourselves. We, te- we test ourselves constantly mentally. And that's when we go, yes, I can. You dig deep. You realize you can. All right. You've got 10 more seconds. You're going to get a 30-second rest soon. And the last little stretch of the running segment, the last little stretch of the finish line will be in front of you for five, four, three, two, and one. John, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful work, my boy. Lovely. At home, fantastic work. Compose yourself now. You've got a quick break. You pull to the side. You've got a 30-second recovery. You're grabbing some water. You're grabbing some goo. You're thinking about the race next. You realize you lost two or three Ks before the finish line. Yes, you can. You realize it's there. You can almost smell the victory. All right, so get there. Prepare yourself. Make sure you're physically ready for it and mentally prepared. And tell yourself why you can do it. This is when you, at the end, you tell yourself the motivational points you hold on to. We all have them. They just differ between all of us. All right. So, John, step ups. The last round. 30 seconds yes, per leg. <laughs> 30 seconds per leg. Get ready in three, two, one. Off you go. Make sure the weight is to that heel. We want to engage your hamstring and your glute. The most important part when we start getting tired is sometimes our mind switches off. We start programming ourselves to just do what's mechanical. Don't do that, yeah. Force correct form. Force muscle make them to work the proper way. Make sure when you're doing it up, you're coming it down, you're controlling it intentionally and cutting both up and down directions. Make it count. We're going to change legs in five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Either transition, switch it out. There we go. 30 seconds. The last 30 seconds. Step up to this leg. The last three seconds. Off you go. Next will be incline mountain climbers. That's where you're coming down here. You're going to catch those joints. You don't want to hurt yourself, so you're controlling it. All right. Beautiful. Perfect temp. At home, if you want to increase the speed, you can, but do not sacrifice form. You've got 10 seconds left. 10 seconds. We have incline mountain climbers around the corner. Make it count in five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect, John. Last mountain. You're coming downhill now. Make it count. Control to the knees to elbows. Off you go. It's 30 seconds. Next will be single leg balance taps, which again, essentially is a 60 second gap to control the heart rates. Slow the breathing. You're still working. You're just working the smaller muscle. We're working that balance between both legs. All right, you've got 15 seconds left. You're going to get a 60 second active rest soon. You're almost there in five, four, three, two, and one. World class. Single leg balance taps. All right. The last little bit, 30 seconds per leg. And the last little bit of leg strength, the last little bit of climb up the hill to get to the finish line. Off you go. Single leg balance taps, 30 seconds per leg. Now we are slowing it down. We are catching our breath. We are forcing the small muscles to do their work. All right. We are coming uphill soon. So we know. We have to make sure our muscles are activated for make sure they're ready. You've got 15 seconds left. Beautiful work. Love that control. 10 more seconds at home. 10 more seconds before we change legs. We're working both legs to try to work out any sort of discrepancies or differences between legs. We'll always have a favorable side. In three, two, and one. Transition to the other leg. Swift change. There we go. We'll always have a dominance like we keep saying. That's not the problem. Is that we make sure we try and work on that dominance. We try and balance them as best we can. You've got 20 seconds to go. We're going to finish with leg surrenders. The last little bit of that running segment. The last hill to climb to the top. John is already celebrating. You know what's coming. I'm blind. You won. 10 seconds to go. Keep moving. You've got this. You're almost there. At home, let's make a count. Leg surrenders in five, four, three. Two and one. Beautiful work. Leg surrenders, my boy. Leg surrenders. Let's go. Last 10 seconds. You climb that hill. You can see the finish line. It's coming. You're nearly there. In three, two, one. Off you go. Leg surrenders. Up and down. There we go. Down left side. And up. Perfect. Back and straight. Abs are tight. It's almost like you got a second burst of wind, which does happen when you're motivated. That second burst of wind, it comes in when you least expect it. It's all about the mental mindset. Make it count for yourself. You've got 15 seconds left. We're going to get a 30 second rest soon. You're almost there. 10 more seconds, John. World class. And home, dig deep. You've got this. Make it count. For five, four, three, two, and one. World class. World class. At the end of the Movement Empire, we like to remind ourselves of digging deep, mental challenges. We've got, John, a couple of burner rounds here. All right? Nothing hectic. Just a little bit of a finishing, a little bit of a runner finisher to, to mentally dig deep. This man's mentally strong. You want to work on that muscle by itself. Mental strength is a different muscle to work by. That's when you're digging deep. When you least expect something, you get thrown your way. How do you adapt quickly to it? How do you adapt in that situation? All right, so, John, the last bit of burnaround just to mentally challenge you. A mentally strong man already. Let's dig deep. Off you go. 40 seconds, jogging on the spots. When I say so, you sprint. 
Leave it all in the mat for 20 seconds. All right, you thought the finish was lying in front of you, you realize top of the hill, you realize, uh oh, it's not there. Got a K to go. Got a K to go. <laughs> all right, so you got 25 seconds, pace yourself, and you got to burst for 20 seconds, you got to slow it down again for 40 seconds. You got three rounds like this. The rest is the jog. Okay, so you can see there's a mental challenge there already, because you've got a jog after you've got a sprint, which means the heart rate's already up. How do you compose your heart rate and breathing while still running? That's up to you to challenge and actually figure it out. Deep breaths, you know, sprint soon in five, four, you got this, John. Three, two, one, go. 20 seconds, make it count, explode yourself at home, dig deep, explode yourself, push yourself. You're working, you realize if I sprint, I gain some momentum here. Let's dig deep and make it count. You have got 10 more seconds. When I say change, you will taper off to a jog, but you will not stop running. You will push yourself for five, four, three, two, and one. Back at that jog. We'll I've time. got these. I've got these. <laughs> you know when you run so fast, you've got to compose your glasses. Then you know that's... Yeah. Then you know you're pushing yourself. Then you know you're pushing yourself. All right. So it's a 40-second jog. It's a transition. You've, you've caught your legs, you've composed them again, we're digging deep, we're testing that mental strength, you're working your mental muscle, tell yourself you can, even when you think you can't, you thought the, the finish line was close, it wasn't, we're challenging yourself, you've got this, make it count. All right, so catch your breath, slow it down. Deep breaths, compose that oxygen intake. You've got 10 more seconds for the last sprint, breathe, oxygen intake in five, four, make it count, three, two, and one. Breathe, the belly has oxygen, Deep breaths, control that breathing. The moment you stop sprinting, your first thing to do is deep breaths in, slow breaths out, win that oxygen battle, slow the heart rate. You've got 10 more seconds. You're digging deep, John, you've got this. After you've got one more to go. For five, four, three, two, and one. Slow it down again, there we go, breathe. Take three or four deep breaths. I can guarantee you within 15 seconds you're gonna compose your breathing, the heart rate will come down. It's teach you how to actively rest, all right? You've got one more sprint of this, one more sprint. You're nearly there. At home, you're nearly there. Let's make it count. I don't know so much. You said that last time. I said it last time. Okay. Maybe a little mental challenge again. We don't really know. We'll see. I'm surprising myself as of right now. I'm not really certain. We'll see what pops up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 15 seconds. You have one more sprint left. Stick it with John. He's your training part of the day. He's training for the high man. He's testing himself mentally and physically. And I hope you are as well. Get ready in five, four, three, two, one last sprint, John, 20 seconds, make it count, the finish line is there, yes you can, dig deep at home, breathe, breathe, don't hold your breath, make it count, oxygen is life, it helps your muscles survive, you're nearly there, you've got 10 more seconds, love you John, push, push, you're nearly there, you're almost there, in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, <laughs> the Iron Man, <laughs> there we go, world, world class, compose your breathing, Slow it down. Slow it down. The work is done. All right. So what do you now? I'm allowing you 30 seconds to rest. Control that breathing. This is the moment you get a small recovery. All we're finishing with is your core. Obviously, your core is finding in the bottom, but your cardio is done. Okay. So all that's left now is your core works. So while you're covering, you've got 50 more seconds. You've got the plank. Alternating side kicks. It's just this. All right. We're just getting your abs. It's one round with flow. All right. We're just getting your abs. The heart rate is done. Okay. So get ready. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Should we finish? It's all about the mental Let's challenge. Go. For me, this is part of the session. I thought we were done, but I guess we're not. I'm being surprised myself here. So plank, alternating side kicks for 60 seconds. That's the last bit of endurance for your abs. In three, uh, just side kick. Open up the side. In two and one, off you go. Rotate through. You can lift the opposite arms. Lift one arm, the side, and lift and kick. There we go. Beautiful. Love it. There we go. Kick it through. You can follow the foot with your eye line. Just so you can see where you're going. There we go. Okay, so. You can elevate the leg if you want. You can slow control down. The most important part is you're pivoting through your abs. This is 60 seconds. The heart rate is slowing down, okay? But your abs cannot rest when you're doing anything like an Ironman, especially. Your abs are fundamentally important to support your posture through the entire race. But if your abs get tired, your back will take that strain, which means it'll affect your cycling, it'll affect your running, and your swimming, okay? You've got 30 seconds left. Next, we'll do side plank dips. Keep going. <laughs> John, I thought it was a mental challenge, man. That's why you're here. We're getting you prepared for the Ironman, all right? Ironman is a, it's a tough challenge. You've got 10 more seconds. You're almost there. Lovely work. Next will be a side plank dip in five, four, three, two, and one. Well done, John. Okay, side plank dips. 30 seconds per side in three, two, one. Off you go. A little dip. There we go. Beautiful. 
Begin to the obliques, your abs again, abs are fundamentally important for everything we do in life. There we go, but especially when doing a race like an Ironman. All right, your abs are so important to keep your posture right, support your back. You're on a bike, you're running, you're doing transitions like John Terry, you're doing brick sessions, they're really, really tough. The most important part is to make sure your body, especially your abs, is ready for it. You've got 10 more seconds before we change sides. All right, John, this is definitely the last little sequence you're doing. I promise you, I'll give you my word in five, four, three, two, and one. Transition, other side, there we go. Last 30 seconds of the sequence, sprint this sit-ups, which is not as bad as you think. <laughs> All right, in three, two, and one, off you go. While you're doing, I'm gonna tell you what's next. We can try this I sit on your back. <laughs> all right, it's one year time. Okay, that's all it is. No, this is this is a booby trap. This man, is a booby trap, man. This is reminding you what's deep, man. You got to finish that race. You got ten more seconds, John. Ten more seconds, and you got thirty seconds more of work, and you're done. Just the cool down is left. In five, four, three, two, and one. On your back, you're gonna bring one knee at a time to meet the body midway. Okay. There we go, off you go, 30 seconds, love it. There we go, perfect. This is your last 30 seconds, around the corner is your cool down. All right, for me, the part of the most important part of the session is you are then doing injury preventative. You are cooling the body down, taking tension out of your muscles. You've got 15 seconds left, you're nearly there. At home, 10 more seconds, make it count, you're nearly there, John. Here we go, for five, four, three, he's smiling, two, and one. World class. Great, great work. Catch your breath, stay on your back for now, compose it with 30 seconds and the cool down. John, when I say the first thing we need down, is to push into that front leg. All right, all we're doing is that, it's a deep lunge. If you're ready, we're going to start whenever you are. We're going to do 30 seconds per leg in three, two, and one. One knee in front of you, like this. This here. One leg up, one leg down. Into that front leg. Okay? Just there and hold it. There we go. Leaning back, you'll feel the hip flexor stretch on the left side. Okay? Control it. Slow, control, breathing. Now we are cooling you down, so make sure you're taking deep breaths, slowing the heart, rate, allowing the muscles time to release the tension. You built up a lot of tension, during, especially anything like an Ironman, there's a lot of tension built in your muscles, a lot of fatigue, adrenaline, the lactic acid buildup, your mind's taking a beating, there's a lot going on. So make sure you allow yourself both to cool down. Okay, we're gonna change legs in five, four, three, two, and one. Easy transition, up you go, and perfect. Love that, hold it there. When I say change, the next one's gonna be this. It's a pigeon pose for you. It's that front leg. Okay, just that. We're releasing your ITB into your glutes and your quads. 15 more seconds. Next will be a pigeon pose stretch. That'll also be a 30 seconds per time. Give yourself time to switch the legs off. Okay, you nearly there. Five, four, three, two, and spin a leg in front of you. There we go, underneath you. Either way, I don't mind which leg. And it's that front leg, perfect. And hold it there. Beautiful. When I say change, I'll be an easy transition to the other leg, but slow changes, okay? Don't force it, just easy progressions. When you're cooling down at home, please remember that you are doing slow changes, you're cooling down, you put a lot of stress to your body, you've worked your body very, very hard, you're tired, allow your body time to change, unlace those toes, moving gently, exercise, exercise, we're just cooling down, it's injury preventing, no point now, jerking through the range and you hurt yourself. All right, we're going to change legs in five, four, three, two, and one. Switch it out, easy transition. Underneath you, perfect. When I say change on, you're gonna sit on your bum, legs in front of you, and just touch those toes. Releasing your hamstrings and your quads, and your calves, all of it, okay? 15 more seconds. Slow, controlled breathing. We're cooling you down. All right, next we're gonna see the toe touch in five, four, three, two, and one. Legs in front of you, just like that, beautiful. Lean forward, get those kneecaps to the back, then back the knees down to the ground, and just lean into it. Beautiful, just like that. This is 30 seconds. When I say change, you'll roll into your stomach, you'll do a cobra, push the top half up and stretch those abs. Right, you've worked your foundation incredibly hard today, you put it to the ringer. It's time to cool it down, and allow the time to switch off. You've got 10 more seconds. When I say change, it'll be a gentle, slow release. Let's roll over in five, four, three, two, and one. Easy transition, roll into that stomach. Push the top off up, there we go. Down you come, full body. Hands underneath the shoulders, and up you come. And hold it there, beautiful, love that. This is your foundation stretch. As I've said, you put a lot of tension to your abs. You've worked them so hard, so your abs supported you through everything you did today. John can definitely attest to that and say to you, your abs work through everything. The core move at the end was just to remind your abs when they get tired to still dig deep, to not let you down. 
When I say change, you're going to pop your bum in the air. Do a downward dog in five, four, three, two, and one. Up you go. Transition, beautiful. Hold it there. If you want to gently pulse your heels, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. That's a slightly deeper stretch into those Achilles, your calf, all that, your posterior chains, the hammies and your glutes. It's a lovely stretch. It's 30 seconds. When I say change, you put your knees down to the ground, join to a child's pose. All right, you've got 10 more seconds. That'll be your last stretch for the day coming up in five, four, three, two, and one. Down you go, child's pose, and just rest. This is your time, John C. Congratulations, yourself. well done. All right, this is your 60 seconds. You have worked so hard today. Really, we told the session was done almost three times, and three times we pulled you back, mental testing you, all right? Sometimes you've got to be mentally tested, not just physically, but it's your mindset is a muscle by itself. It reminds you what you can do. And if you allow outside, you can't do it, you'll never do anything in life. You've got to test yourself and remind yourself of your physical and mental capabilities. Okay, so you've got 30 seconds left. When I say slowly unravel, you'll slowly come out of it. Not in a rush. Compose your breathing. You're nearly there. At home, 15 more seconds. When I time you down, you'll gently roll out, avoiding a head rush, avoiding anything. In 10 more seconds, you're almost there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Up you come. John, world class. How do you feel? I feel fantastic. I feel like I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> Great session. If you've earned your nap, enjoy it as well. We'll see you soon.